Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Wood Brass and Glue on the GXV6. Uh, today we're going to continue on with the US Constellation. Uh, we've gone through already the framework and sorting out the frames. We've gone through the gun ports and sorting out the gun ports. Even though um, there is a problem with the gun ports, we're going to have to go back and actually fix the gun ports. But that's a problem that's actually very easy to fix, so it's not a big deal. Um, the big deal is the fact of those uh, two, four cannons, sorry, that will have to be fitted. Um, having a look at the uh, deck overhang uh, and where the cannons sit, um, I don't see there being a problem with not rigging the cannons. As long as we can get the cannons straight um, and into place, all the other option is actually going to be, um, if I can do it, um, actually slicing the cannons themselves and just gluing them uh, to the inner hole. Because you're not going to see those cradles. They're completely under the deck. They're completely out of the road. There, there's nothing uh, there that we can do with. So, I don't know. That's something we're going we're gonna to have a look at. Uh, same again with the main mast. Uh, I do want to get the lower ring in, uh, only because it's a guide factor for the main mast when the uh, mast actually goes through. Um, again, yeah, gonna have to do something there. Uh, however, um, that's not the thing for this video. Um, uh, this video is probably going to be a slightly bit longer uh, as well. I'm going to say that now, even though I've just started recording, um, because we're going to have a look at the whole planking uh, of the first layer, and we're going to get that on so that I can get the model to sit in the cradle correctly. Because uh, at the moment, it's not sitting in there correctly, and uh, eventually I'm going to break one of the frames if I keep handling the model the way I am now. So if we get the first layer dealt with, uh, it will actually uh, strengthen up the entire model, uh, all the frames, uh, pull it all into position. Uh, we don't need to actually sand and clean that layer, we just need that layer on. And after that, we're going to look at the furnishings on the second deck down uh, so that we can clear those off uh, again, we'll look, have a look at those cannons and the main mast at that point, and we'll go from there. Oh, yeah, I still got to look down at the foot pedal, okay? All right, and that's what the foot pedal does. I love the foot pedal. All right, so, uh, mind the top of my head. I only have three buttons on the foot pedal, and well, yeah. I suppose I could probably tap on the touch screen, but yeah, that's fine. You guys can see the top of my head. Right, so what I've done is I've already gone... Get that to sit. Um, I've already put... Um, this is from the Scottish Made Build. So this is leftovers. These are exactly the same size as the uh, first layer for the constellation. In fact, um, these three here are cutoffs from a broken one um, from the constellation model. They're all exactly the same size. This gives me my plank count. Um, I've read the plans. The plans do say start from here, uh, go that way 14, uh, and then start from here and come back. And there should be this gap in the middle, but that's not how you plank a ship. It looks really nice, but that's not how you do it. <laughs> so what I've done is I've cut these, I've mounted them. I did have uh, push pins, but push pins came out. So I ended up having to nail them. And I've only done it on one side, so that's fine. Oh, let me get it back in there. Um, so essentially what we've got is 27 uh, planks. So if I go like that, you can uh, see where I've got steel. Uh, I've put 14 as the middle plank, and then the top plank is 27. Um, 
Now, saying that a 14 is the middle point, well, is that not going in? Okay, all right, that's a bit better. Um, it can be 14 or 15. Now, this is going to be dependent on how this plane actually lays on the model. Um, so, got a piece of wood here. This is stuff out of the model kit. So, what should happen if I hold that in position there is it should have a natural lay. So, as to the arse. Uh, yeah, it does actually. Look at that. Very nice. Okay, so this shouldn't need to be twisted, it shouldn't need to be cut, none of that. Same again with the top one, right? although I will point out on the top one we will have to uh, form uh, to the stern and we'll do that later on in the video. But essentially if I put that down there, that should go there, it's not twisting, it should go down to here. Yeah, there's no twist. Um, once I put that uh, curvature in, it, it'll fit fine. And then turn that back over. Uh, same with this one. So it sits fine, it twists onto the deadwood. That area down the back here is called deadwood. Okay, why? Because it's actually dead wood. You can't do anything with it. Um, but this is where the uh, hill meets the rudder. Um, so that goes down without too much of a twist. And if I hold this one in position, I should be able to twist him. Right. And I can. Look at that. Nice. So I might need to just shave that bit up a little bit more. I don't think that's actually done right. Um, because it's a little bit blocky, I can uh, do that. Now that we're at this point, this is the point where we start to correct uh, the shaping on the frames. If you bend the wood and it sticks out, I mean, like, okay, what's that? That's, that's going to be number six there. Um, oh! God, I hate when that happens. So if I hold six and then bend it to there, you can readily see that it is actually following the frame rate. And that's what you're actually looking for. Now, we need to get the keel, the middle, and the top frames on first before you do anything else. You know what the instructions say? They actually tell you to start from here and do 14, and then start from here and go that way. Uh, no. You put the keel, the middle, and the top frames on first. And the reason is they don't get cut. They're full frame, uh, full planks. So everything between the keel and the middle uh, is cut um, to shape. Everything from the middle to the top is cut to, to fit in. And you might be wondering why I'm going to all this trouble when this is only the first layer and we're going to put a, a nice decorative layer over the top. Well, eventually I'm going to do a, a single plank, a, a single plank model. And this is how you do a single plank model. So even though this is a double plank model, I'm still going to build it as a single plank model. It's to get the skill level up to get to a single plank model. And the single plank models, they're bigger, they're more expensive, they're more fiddly, and oh my god, are they more gorgeous. Like, seriously. But if you make a mistake, it really, really does show out. So, as I say, practice makes perfect. So, while we've got this now, let's do the practice. All right, so now I've got this done, I'm going to do the keel, the middle, and the top. I'm going to go through, I'm going to work and get those on, uh, get them symmetrical on both sides. And what symmetrical actually means, uh, it's one of those days. Um, and then once we've got those, I'll take you through how to actually calculate um, what you do from here to fit it to here and to fit it to here.
So, bear with me. I'll be back soon. All right, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Um, down on uh, the model. If I flip it over, as you can now see, we have uh, the keel line on, we have the midline, and we have the top. So if I can get that to just sit there for a moment. Uh, just before I go too much further, one thing to remember about the top, if I grab this piece and put it down, uh, that bit, that's actually going up to the bow. So this piece cut out here uh, is where the anchor uh, davit will actually come out. So what you want to check is if you lay it on the model, is this cutout is flush with the deck, okay? Um, it can be slightly raised. If you're out by like you know half a mil or something like that, it can be trimmed to size. Just keep in mind though that this eventually will be sitting like that on the model and there is a davit and stuff uh, coming out of this gap. So. First thing to be very mindful of when you're putting this on. Now it should be uh, flush with uh, the gun deck here. However, you see that mine's dropped down. That's straight, that's not. So before anybody asks, the plank itself is straight. The gun deck itself is not straight. Um, there's uh, That frame there is actually higher than it should be. Um, I didn't notice that until after I put the plank on. And then realize that, yeah, it just means that when I do this part, um, I'm just going to have to do some fancy stuff here just to make it look reasonably good. However, when we do the top layer, uh, the top layer will uh, join in correctly. So, first thing to consider, that bit. There's an anchor davit up here. That's the gap for it, and if you set that wrong, you're going to have a world of problems, okay? So, as I said before, there are 12 planks between the top and the mid, uh, yeah, top and mid, and the keel and, and the mid. So, 12 planks come down here. I'm um, just trying to think of which ones I measured up, that one and that one. Okay, now I have done some measurements uh, on this and it turns out that uh, frame 8 through frame 13, if you measure, are in fact the same size. That theoretically means that each one of these frames is identical. And we're going to run with the assumption that they are identical because this is the gaps that we're worried about. Uh, essentially, this is where we'll be cutting the wood from, as you will see in a moment. There's two other measurements you need to take. Where this on the uh, bow, the keel plank to the mid plank on the bow, and again on the stern, keel plank, uh, to the mid plank. You need those two. So why do we need those? Well, to shape the planks to fit, you have to take that gap, divide it by 12. Why 12? Because 12 planks fit here. We need to fit 12 planks here. We need to have 12 planks here. It is actually that simple. It's just people get really, really confused with it. And the instructions for the actual model say you start planking, whichever way you want to plank, uh, and you cut the wood to shape, uh, remembering that the planks will ride over each other. What they're talking about there is um, if you bend the plank round, you'll see that this plank will naturally bend over the top of the previous plank. Because remember, we're after that natural curve. So the way I do it is I take one of these plank, uh, one of these frames, mark as the middle, 
that's the front, uh, the bow frame, that's the stern frame, and when I take the plank, if I hold, hold the plank up more to the camera, you can see I have marks on it. These marks match up three marks I have on the plank, which is already fitted onto the model. So all we have to do is match up that, that, and that. And everybody's going to go, now what? <laughs> now what is a trip to Kmart? And what you want are these bulldog clips. Two packs, actually, would suit very well. And the reason you want two packs is because you want one set, which is going to be these. And from the other set, you want the handles. The little handles. And what you do is you put the little handle in like that. So they sit like that. Plank on the model. Line up the markers. Push down and, oh, look at that. You have just made your own set of planking clips. Or, of course, you can go out to a model shop and you can spend a lot of dollars getting a whole heap. But seriously, oh god, they get very tight. Now you will, will see sometimes the wood won't be entirely flat. Make sure you always keep a couple of normal ones, and all you're going to do is push this down. Pay attention to how it sits. Remember, we haven't cut this yet, but it's not shaped. We haven't glued anything. What we're doing at the moment is we're making sure that from this frame to this frame, uh, lined up on the marks that you've got, making sure that you've left extra at the bow and the stern, and that this section here is sitting exactly how you want this section to sit. Nice, straight, relatively smooth, and that it's pinned in nicely. I actually have more of these. <laughs> right there. Right there. Oh, okay, so as you can see, I've made up, I've got half and half, so uh, these are actually the planking ones that I've made up, and the other ones are just normal. I also have another box uh, sitting up there, that's why I say grab two boxes. I think there's a hundred in the box or something. Trust me, lifesaver. Makes all this so much easier. Because here is where you're going to need a pen, some variety, um, and a lot of patience. Because what you want to do is bend your plank around. It doesn't have to sit fully there. And basically mark off the end. Again, same with the stern. Bend it around. It doesn't have to be. Mark off the stern. And then, of course, pull all the pins back in. We're going to be needing those again. I don't remember where I actually seen that. I think it was a YouTube video somewhere like three years ago or something. Um, yeah, it's a, probably one of the smartest things I've ever seen with a book. It's great. All right, so we have the plank. So we know that's the bow. That's the forward frame. That's the aft frame. That's the stern marker. Now, as I said, you got to measure that. Divide by 12. Now, when I did that, it came to 4.2 millimeters. So we take that, we go out to roughly 4.2, yeah, cool. Um, I would do this with the electric uh, electronic set that I have for calipers, uh, which make it so much more accurate, except um, I left them turned on and the batteries work. And basically all we're doing 
Okay, we're going to put a mark where that is. Uh, I'm going to take a rule that's far, far too short. Okay, we're going to grab the other rule, which is quite a bit longer. Um, and we're going to take, basically we're going to draw on this, and I've got it upside down and all in and everything, but Any plus one. It's not actually. It's not really the plus two. Try that again. Yeah, that's a bit better. Nip off the end. Tuck that away. Now before we go too much further, we're going to do the stern line as well. And the stern is 3.6, so if you... Yeah. Yeah, this is really, really going to get painful. This is probably one of the painful ways to do it. However, this is essentially what you're going to have to do um, for your top layer anyway. Of course, doing that, the top layer is going to be a hell of a lot easier to actually cut than what this one is. Over there, uh, and now the mad fun begins. So that's about. So what we now have to do is basically cut that little thing off. Oh, I wonder if my wife's little hobby thing will work. Okay, I've never actually tried this. Oh, well, we my wife seems to have thought that this would actually work. By the way, this is what they use for patch, uh, patchwork quilting. Um, you just get a good spotlight. Or you pinch the one from your wife. Push back, line that back up there, push that down. And that actually bends around. So that's not too bad. That's my dog in the background. I don't know if you can actually hear him. He's probably barking at it, but I'm passing by again. Out of the road, flip that over and line that to that. I always like to do this just to. And yep. Now you will end up with little gaps, don't be too concerned. That actually worked really well, by the way. Hmm. Um, we'll need to get a supply of blades, however. I have a sneaking suspicion that this wood is going to eat through those blades. Alrighty, now for the fun part. Ooh. Uh oh. That's, that's the wrong one.
No, <laughs> we'll do it that way. All right, when you put the glue on, okay, try to just beat it along the edge as well of the previous plank. And the reason is it will make the chair on the two planks together. It will just be a lot easier in the long run. That looks about right. Now, if you've got everything done correctly, and hopefully you have, if you have everything done correctly, I'll finish the sentence now. Um, the ship should be symmetrical to both sides. Uh, which means the measurements you're doing on one side of the ship should, in fact, um, mirror the other side of the ship. So you shouldn't have too many problems. Now, when you're using the normal bulldog to pull the planks in, make sure the bulldog is on an angle and you are, in fact, passing across both planks. Put another one on there and push that down, I think. Yeah. This video might be a bit longer than uh, normal, my apologies, but uh, I'm only going to put one side on the video anyway. And when we do the next, uh, when we go to the top, um, I will take you back through the exact same steps yet again. Um, so you weren't too sure the first time and you didn't want to rewind the video. Personal choice, of course. Um, you will actually be able to uh, watch it when I do the top one. What's going on here? And of course, got the bow section. Now, if it works out as it should, that should actually pull down, but it's not going to. Seems suspicious. This wood should have a bow in it somewhere. I'm sure, it does have a bow in it. Better. Um, if it doesn't, of course, fit on the bow correctly, then said nail hammer. Be very, very, very careful. You will just split the wood. Do this the other way. It is another way to do this. Oh, and I'm knocking the camera all over the place. Uh, it's called a thumbtack. Yet. So, as you can see, the thumbtack, I look that up the camera and rotate, the thumbtack is actually pulling down on that bow section ne enough now that the bow section has joined up the center line. All right, now for the stern. And the stern is just a complete repeat of the bow in pretty much every way, shape, and form.
and again we need to bulldog clip the pen there and I'll run out of bulldog clips. As I said, I did make sure that I grabbed two packs. Oh, okay, so there's 28 in the pack. Don't get bloody things in. I do, instead of driving a nail into the, uh, into the stern, remembering that the more or, uh, nail stuff that we put in the uh, bow on the stern, the more chance you're going to have of actually snapping um, wood. And the one thing we don't want to do is, of course, snap the wood. Um, and that didn't go where it was supposed to. Uh, I'm going to have to thumbtack that. Damn it. I was hoping I didn't have to do that. That looks like I will. Also looks like I might have caught, uh, might have um, cut the stern a little short. If I come around this way, um, you can see that if I push that down, that's really on there. That's a, it may turn into a problem. I'm not going to say it is a problem. I'm just taking it with it may be a problem. And that's about that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to let this one drop. I'm then going to replicate it and do it here. And that's exactly how we're going to do uh, the whole flanking. One on one side, one on the other, and just work our way to the keel. Once that's done, of course, we can actually flip the model over and stick it on its stand and make it easier and less prone to being accidentally knocked off. Uh, yeah, there you go. That's, that's how you do it. That said, the bulldog clip trick is really, really easy. I'll just show you again. So you take one bulldog, take that out, open the bulldog. What did I have to? Oh, yeah, sorry. I missed a step when I was telling you that. And I don't know where my pliers are at the moment, so I'm just going to use both pliers. You can roughly see what I'm doing. What I'm doing is straightening those end bits. All right, there we go. So I've straightened up the ends, otherwise they don't fit. And then, yeah, you push it in like that. Nice and simple. Um, as I said, I did half a pack of the other ones left. Um, well, I don't know where the extras are, though. I thought I actually kept them, but uh, I must not. Uh, and, yeah, that's essentially it. Great part. Fairly easy. Okay, guys, if you liked the video, of course, do the thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to put comments down below. Uh, hit the bell, notification, you got all that. Uh, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It'd be a really good. Subscription levels are going up slowly, which is fantastic. I love it. And the comments are really good as well. Um, and I do read every comment. I probably don't respond to as many as I should, but I do actually read them. Um, as I said, I will go back over this again uh, when we do the, the upper section of the planking. So... It will be the same thing. I'll just rehash it because a lot of people ask when I did the Scottish Maid how I did it, and then I explained it, and then they asked how I did it. Okay, you get that. And the way I do, there is a lot of ways of doing this, but the way I do it here, it's exactly the same way that I'm going to do it with the top layer. So the uh, measurements that I've got written down are essentially the same measurements that I'm going to use for that as well. So we've already taken that extra step uh, out of the road. Although I will say I do actually check, uh, check everything. So that's going to dry. 
So that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, I'm going to do this section, put the stuff aside, uh, and then the next video will be the upper planking. Um, and there's a few little bits and pieces we have to do while we're doing the upper planking, and a special part of that will be the gun ports. We don't mark them, and then we actually plank the whole thing, and then we go to cut into it and find out there's a frame there. That would be bad. That would be very bad. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, there we go.